Welcome, pool fans, to another AccuStats production. For over 40 years, AccuStats has brought you some amazing pool, and this has become a fan favorite. One of the toughest fields around 16 of the greatest players on the planet played on this huge monster 5 by 10 foot diamond. This is the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. Are you guys ready for some great pool? This match, next matchup is going to be awesome. Here we go. He is a 2021 World Tin Ball Champion. Also, China Open Champion. Sponsored by Owl Unlimited and Zan Pro Staff from Tokyo, Japan. Make some noise from Naoki Oi! And his opponent is Puerto Rico Open Champion, also 2018 European Champion and runner-up of this very event last year. Sponsored by Erg Buren and Predator from Erzlot, Poland. Kinder makes a noise for Conrad Ushishan. They're lagging for the break, and our referee is Ricky Bryan, sending it up to Jeremy Jones and Mark Wilson in the AccuStat Skybox. I always say, and I always mean it, I love pool. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones are here with you for our continuing coverage of the 2024 Bigfoot Challenge. Jeremy, any opening match thoughts here? Well, I believe it was last year that Conrad made a real run at this event. Did he finish second to Shane Van Boning uh, in the final? Didn't have his best final. Of course, Shane played really well. Um, don't recall Oi uh, being in this event before. But uh, definitely, I think the 10-footer will set up for him just fine. Breaks the balls well. Pretty smart cue ball. Definitely a guy grinder, even though you can't necessarily tell at times just because he's such a free-flowing guy around the table. Mm -hmm. But uh, can knock in the tough shots, and you know you're going to have to knock some here uh, and some here on the 10-footer. And a very pleasant disposition from this guy. He's won the leg, raced to 10. Just to the right of the head spot. Six ball. Tracking for the side. Found it. Nice break. Nice break. Well, I think that's still the break. You know, you can play different speeds. Now, he didn't go, you know, 100%, right? But he didn't back off. Kind of like we saw, was it Fetter yesterday? Kind of breaking mm -hmm. more from the center, crossing it over a little bit as the one tracked down the middle. The cue ball ended up in this position quite often. And he happened to fall on just the right angle to get short side on the two here. So he can get started with the break and run if he gets position. Nice shot. Yeah. He didn't have any trepidation in that stroke. He was going for it. No, that's an almost just uh, what we talked about earlier. Once you start to do that and not worry so much, you kind of figure out that's the right way to go about things. Mm-hmm. You know, his last year and a half wasn't quite as good as those previous two years where, you know, he got to many Final Fours, a couple finals and some really big events as well. Um, seemed like he was just a mainstay towards the end of the events for about a two-year run. Like I said, the last year or so, year and a half, not quite as good. A very pleasant, humorous attitude as well. Well, it used to be the interviews, you know, that almost kind of overshadowed his game at, at times. And then he started to get those results. And, of course, we still love the interviews from Naoki Oi. There are none better. But um, it's much more about his game now, I think, with the fans than anything else. Probably shaving the right side. He's got four balls. There are some gaps. He's got four balls to try and get the snooker with. Oh, he went in went long. I thought he would just play it lighter and just roam on that right side of those balls rather than uh, uh, really try and go with some distance. Now, Yasheshin, very straight cueing I mean, he, and flowing, too. He's real smooth on his transition. So that sets up well for long shots on the 10-foot table. Well, he's, he's not afraid, that's for sure. And that was not an egregious error. That was just a hard shot is all. He, he made a nice pass at it. That's all you can do. Yeah, and he played a bit of a two-way. The percentages were there. It just happened to get in the gap for Oi. So, again, had a chance to run him from the start. Missed an open two ball. That's a nice position. But now in a real good spot. One thing I like about Jushishin is, you know, the cue ball can get a little loose at times. Mm-hmm. 
but he still doesn't back down. And it's just fun mm-hmm. to watch. Yeah. Well, he's been around on the scene here for the last five or six years, and we've broadcast many of his matches. And just me trying to use his name was a trepidation for me. I used to dog it a little bit and just want to say Conrad J. But uh, anyway, uh, really admire him. Love his attitude as well. Very pleasant man. 29 years old. Boy, he's 40. Yeah, great shot there. That's a prime example of not backing off. And then your tip position really does the job killing the cue ball. So when you try to get real subtle right there, the tip really doesn't work as well. And cue ball can get away from you a little bit. Yeah, Conrad, hard to say it. About 10 times harder to spell it. With uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Not Conrad, but Jushishin. Only one vowel out of some 13 letters. Is that right? 14 letters? Well, he's got some U's. And one just one U. That's it. Just one vowel. And oh, all that's those, right. Yeah. Well, if you don't count the Y's. Well, the Y, yeah. <laughs> the Y's kind of on the yeah, on the we'll, bridge a little bit there. We'll, we'll give him that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but if you turn your head, Oi will put some balls down quickly, and uh, you might miss a fantastic shot or two. And Conrad's a fast player as well. Yes, indeed. We went and got the full gamut in the last match. All 19 games with Alex Bedwine went to 10 9 over Mad Max and a big comeback. We may have 10 9 here, but it'll be a little quicker pace, that's for sure. 100%. Yeah, the 30 second shot clock will not come to effect. For those just joining us, a couple of rule updates. The 10 ball does not win on the break, no jump cues. All ball fouls, random racking. You don't place the two and three on the corners. What am I missing? Anything? I think that's it. <clears throat> Another thing that's real deceptive about Conrad is his break. Uh, it's, it's really good. It's probably still getting better as far as his nine ball break with the nine on the spot. I think that's one that the players are always tinkering with and working on, but this ten ball break, he can he can hit him pretty well. You can look at his stance and see the clearance he has in his stroke. and That allows that free-flowing, smooth transition. It's when you hit your ribs early that problems exist. Yeah, and I think I kind of jinxed him because that opening break can get you, and he did get a little quick for him. I've Very watched, much so. Yeah, I've yeah. watched him break that 10 ball quite often, and uh, usually it's just a little better, and it will get better. The tempo on that transition is crucial for getting that good timing in, and yeah. get the power up with still maintain accuracy. You get yeah. quick, it distorts the tip, and then it's exaggerated as that big swing. And I just look at the best breakers and what they do. And, you know, really, SVB, in my opinion anyway, his best tempo period is the break. Oh, he missed it. They kind of skidded. That was a weird one there. Yeah. Unless he was playing. He might have been playing this shot, to tell you the truth. Maybe. Because look at where the cue ball ended up. He was Yeah, nothing, yeah. So. You wouldn't figure and play it like that just to play a safety. He would be a little more aggressive. Well, that's not a bad response. No, I think you got a partial snooker. Tremendous crowds here all weekend. I'll tell you, there's a player that, no matter what the situation is, he should be able to come to the Derby just because he's such a big part of it, I think, through the years, is Bustamani. I mean, just a guy still at his age, I think he just turned 60 um, recently. But I think he could still win an event. His banks is incredible. His one pocket, he moves like a ghost. And again, if he gets a little confidence, uh, he can, I think he could win the nine ball as well. Yeah. And certainly one of my favorite players of all time, too. Yeah. Great, great guy as well. All right. A little, couple loose safeties. Didn't get the snookers. Looks pretty easy to come behind the 8-5, but maybe not off the left side. I think you dodged the 6 coming two rails and, and wrap it kind of tighter. Now, he played it long behind the 8-5. That's an exceptional way to play it as well. And that gets the one above those balls for a little backdoor mm -hmm. protection. Yeah, nice decision and good execution. Yeah, 
again, these, these guys don't take long. Oh, nice hit. Good shot there yeah. for sure. Just to get the thin enough to hit inside the six, uh, really good. Now, he can be aggressive here if he's comfortable with it, coming two rails on to the three. you got to roll it with a little right English. Now, the one's near the rail, so that makes it a little touchy, but still not tough. He's going to go the other way. Now here, Mark, do you run it back where it's at now, or do you just fall on the end rail behind the seven? I would go conservative, yeah. yeah. That way it gives you a little more one ball control doing that. That way if you hit it thick when you're going all the way across, then that one ball really trips out there. Yeah, and the two's open, you know what I mean? So if you give a cross side bank or something mm -hmm. like that, I mean, that's going to get one of these top players started. They're going to go. Wants to draw this back towards the seven. Oh, he hit behind it too much. Something they don't miss that mark very often. Got up underneath it. You know, sometimes that shot's played with a little bit of low, but also some left to, to check it up so you come into the lower hemisphere of the object ball. So mm -hmm. to get separation doesn't mean it always works out, but it does get separation when you hit it nice. And he kind of went in there with a flat ball. Meaning no spin. Okay, didn't want to get much of an angle. The four doesn't pass the seven. So real nice here just to hold. You can see the work. It needs to stay off the rail. It needs to get decent on the five to get to the six. Done to the center here. Well, I mean, he's playing the to two, run two cushions, the I guess. Yeah. yeah. So this heavier angle, you got to get into the ball pretty decent now to get all the way back. You don't have to crush it, but definitely need some. Pretty good. Oh, really good. I like to get just past the center of the table here. No, he's going to be short. No, nope, maybe he's got enough that he can just follow mm, up. Yeah, it's close. I don't know. You know, this this table, you know, it's still a little slick, so checking it with the inside is, is touchy. Yeah. If you get into the ball a little bit, it'll kind of spread on you. You may go towards the 10. So you kind of got to smooth it above the 9 here. You play from underneath. Yeah, nice. Just let it creep yeah. up there, yeah. But the yeah. thing is, when you smooth it, the check works better. So it's a little bit of a fooler, you know, thinking mm -hmm. that the table's starting to really grab a little bit. But actually, when the stroke's good, you get the most out of the English. And it's 10 ball to tie up the match. Troy Honeycutt, George Hirschman. And two uh, nicely played racks here. Yeah, I definitely could see this being a close one. Of course, any of these players in this event, but definitely get the feeling these two could keep a close one throughout the entire match. Well, they could win this tournament, too. They're both oh, yeah. skilled enough that this is, this is no joke here. These two, serious business, whoever has to get through who the winner of this match. Yeah, I think they're on into the third round now of the banks. Saw Tony Shohan here. I didn't know with his health condition if he would be able to make it. I was kind of glad to see him. He always has a good smile. Yeah, he did pretty well upstairs last night. Did he? Yes, he did. Good for him. He should be confident. Two, oh, two balls tracking. The eight was tracking. So the, so the table is breaking in a little bit. The four rollers are starting to track a little bit better. And that'll be really evident here in a little while when we see SVB 
play because mm-hmm. he's, he's going to break them and tell, tell us exactly <laughs> what the table's doing. Right, push out, so maybe another kind of somewhat tactical game here. Trying to tie up the two or make it a little awkward. I don't know about this push Does out. Does this go? This, uh, yeah, this goes. Well, then that's going to be a horrible push out of you. Yeah. Remember on the push out, right? One thing is you want to give your opponent every thought of trying to give it back to you. That's kind of what, you know, you want to have a chance to get it back. When you push out and there's no chance of getting it back, that was not a good push out. Uh, we'll say it like this. If you ever push out and lose from that shot, it was a terrible push out. Yeah. Unless well, it's just a miracle two-rail kick or something. But um, you, you well, know, I mean, if you I, ever push out and the guy shoots a straight in and runs out, it was a terrible Yeah, pressure. straight in. Now, I have had it to where a couple times where they did run out. But, I mean, I had to push out to such a tough offensive shot, you know, and they, they decided to take it on. And this is the thing. Normally, when you push out to that super tough, incredible, uh, you know, tough uh, offensive mm -hmm. shot, normally you get it back, you know, just because you're in such a bad spot. I don't think I used the second rail here, Mark. Just no, kind of float up for the, for the side. Yeah. yeah. Key to this is don't baby it. When you're not using the second rail, it's easy to under hit it, to, in my opinion. Or at least that's my flaw. There, it was a nice stroke. Really got ideal. Just a little light stun, which he likes a lot as well. I don't think he can just flat out roll it, right? Is he going to no, end up on can. top? Oh, you think? Oh, may, or, yeah. Maybe you have to have a hint of stun then. Yep. Gorgeous. Nice layout. And just don't overthink it here. Uh, just hold your ball for the seven. You don't have to use the rail if you don't want. Up to you. Well, now you end up a little short. Surprised he didn't pinch that a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, with the eight and nine so available. So rub the ten. Oh, he's able to hold it. Yeah, I thought he had to go to the end rail, but it wasn't as thin as I thought. I think if he's a little further away from it, he probably does run the cue ball. But he was close and felt confident and hitting it lightly. This stretch that we see and talk about so often, and the reason why it's brought up is it's a real part of this 5x10. I mean, it's a real part of the game. Yeah, I think I would just set the bridge off to the side rather than maybe under to the table. Looks a little taxing to get under there to it at times. but <laughs> Yes, for us older gentlemen, it's like getting in a Lamborghini here. Yeah. Making me feel a little aches and pains seeing, seeing Ricky have to go after it. Okay, little off angle here. Just a little stun, not much. Mainly the draw to the other side of the tent. Overcut it just a hair. That's why the draw didn't bite quite as much as he anticipated. No problem here, though. And there you go. Nice run out. Quickly, two to one is our score here, Jeremy. And kind of like we anticipated, this would be a bit faster match. Yeah, a few reasons. I mean, we had a load of mistakes in the last, which we wouldn't anticipate any two players in this Bigfoot kind of, not only, you know, Alex and Max doing that again, if a lot, let alone, you know, some other players. So, mm -hmm. And then again, overall, Oi and Conrad play pretty upbeat nine ball or upbeat pool period. Excuse me, we're playing ten ball. In your pool career, did you ever compete against Jim Rempe? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I played him. Actually, we had a spell on the Camel Tour and then, of course, some other tournaments where we drew each other quite often. Played him in uh, 
you know, he had never won the U.S. Open uh, nine ball at uh, Rimpy mm -hmm. and made some runs, of course, at many times. And in 99, it was me, him, had to play each other, and I think it was Luat and Davenport was the final four of the winner's side. And uh, I made the probably the greatest jump shot I ever made in my life at 10-9 against him to end the match and run out against Rimpy. And then Johnny went to beat me in the final of that U.S. Open. But but uh, a lot of people were telling me <laughs> before the match, you know, oh, this is Rimpy's time. You know, I'm in the match, and they're telling me yeah. that. And I'm like, dang, that's strong, guys. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> he was a great player. Oh, yeah. And it was a little, um, you know how the tournaments go. You know, sometimes matches run behind. The schedule gets a little off. And we started our match about an hour and a half late. Uh, end up being about 10.30, I think, at night. And I think it did wear on Jim a little bit. He made a few mistakes. You know, he was, wasn't a spring chicken. And, you know, I'd made a few mistakes with no excuse of, you know, I was a young man. So I think pretty fortunate to win that match. The U.S. Open straight pool was the most prestigious title in pool back in the early 70s by far. And he came into the finals. He was just a kid. Look at this. Clip to five. Cue ball took off. He's going to be okay. Anyway, uh, Rimpy got to the finals against Joe Balsas, who had won it previously and was a pure killer. And Rimpy has a race to 200. Rimpy missed the match ball. It was a nine ball in the side pocket that you wouldn't expect. I mean, it was. And then Balsas got up with 36 and out. So oh, that was. Wow. A, yeah, they always kind of feel like it may have hampered his career. That, that the stigma of that most prestigious title ever. Yeah, I look at certain players and look back at certain matches that could have been different for their career, and it wasn't so much they missed something, but just a matter of not winning that match. One I look at uh, is Dennis Hatch, and that was a 92 U.S. Open final. He got beat 9-8 by Buddy Hall. And I think at that time, Dennis being a young man and how great he played, confidence-wise and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, maybe uh, – maturing him a little bit at that young age and in my opinion i thought he was maybe the best american player just how simple he did things and oh compact stroke yeah power. how athletic he was yeah and, and he wasn't he never dogged it it seemed like and you know buddy getting that win on him i think uh if dennis would have got that win i think things may may have been a little different for his career and he still had a great career of course but i think he may have went on to win many u.s opens yeah uh, when Dennis first came up, so it was Johnny Archer, and uh, they used to play each other religiously at every tournament, and it was a dogfight. It would go back and forth. It wasn't like one had a big edge over the other. So, And they both went on to have great careers. Johnny's perhaps a more prolific career, but nevertheless, yeah, super nice talented. ball there from Conrad. Yeah, it was Rodney. It was Rodney, Dennis, and, and Johnny as far as the upcoming top Americans in those, in those 90s there. Rodney was unbelievable. I mean, just uh, he would shoot shots that just no one else would shoot, just because of his touch and and his creativity. You know, safeties and whatnot. And he won those back-to-back -back pro tournaments, the one in Puerto Rico, and then won the U.S. Open. And looks like it was going to be off to the races for him. And of course, some other players tried to remind him that hey, we're here too. <laughs> we can play. All right, little yeah, a little containing. A little casual, a little casual there. Go for this bank, huh? You got to level out and go for the bank, I think, and come to the end rail with the cue ball. You're going to have a play on the 4-6. You know, and unless you hit the point that stands up, you're going to leave a pretty tough return, mm -hmm. most likely. So, If you're going to play the bank, you want to play it so it can go two rails because it can clip off the nine into the side. It can come across the table off the other ones. Uh, he just drilled it, but... He did play the speed, I was saying, because he can come back across and hit the six or I'll go off the five and hit the six. So, yeah. A lot of ways to win. Kiss shot here. It's got to be subtle if you play it. The bank is just right there as well. The only reason you got to be subtle is you can't let the four come across a lot because you may end up not having a pocket with the seven there. Good yeah. shot. Yeah, he did a good job controlling the four. 
Yeah, and, and not getting on the rail either. If he comes across a six a little bit, the cue ball further a little bit, get on the rail, could become more awkward. I don't know if I come all the way for the side here with the seven so handy. May just lay up for the five in the corner. Nice shot. Now, these guys play a little bit more like what you oftentimes say, uh, just let your talent. I mean, the, yeah. look, they're not second-guessing anything. They're just playing and playing the shots the best they can and go on. And they're playing virtually perfect right now. Yeah, but both these guys isn't about perfect cue ball. They're going to they're gonna always try and play position in what makes sense, but they're not going to you know lose a lot of confidence by being a little out of line. They recover real well. Now, did I see Oi using the extension when he was practicing? Now he's putting it on because of the stretch, but I could have swore he had it on the entire time when he was practicing. No, maybe not. Oi trying to get a two-game lead here. I believe he did win the lag. Oh, no, Conrad won the lag. Excuse me. Right? No, Oi won the lag. It's only day two, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Can't keep, got, uh, keep the brain Long going. ways to go. Yeah. yeah. It was Oi that won the lag, though, I believe. I always felt bad for Jim Rempe because he played with Buddy Hall's prime and Siegel's prime, and he was right there with them, but he was kind of a quiet, understated guy and didn't get the attention they did, you know. So but it, don't think he was less of a player. Yeah, I watched, uh, well, I, was, I got invited to the world tournament, the straight pool, because of my nine ball rankings. I never really played straight pool. It wasn't a game we played down south in Texas, and I was living in Jacksonville, Florida at the time, and luckily I befriended Jimmy Karras, and he helped me for a couple months on just kind of really changing my mind so much, not teaching me the shots as much. I kind of understood that, but just kind of molding my mind for the game a little mm -hmm. bit. But I watched a lot of Jim Rempe's videos that he was out there, and how he liked to break the top of the rack, a little more controlled, you know, and I... I really got into different types of breaks, and I watched a lot of, of Jim's mm -hmm. videos. He was a consummate professional, always dressed the part, always respected the sport. You never see a controversy around him. Then he played as close to perfect as anyone could at that time. And it was, uh, well, he was an image that I always looked up to. All right, a little preference there. Could have checked it with inside. Decided to get into it a little bit with outside. This rack sets up nice, though. Two, three, four on this end. Now he can go back down the other end, take care of business without moving the cue ball a ton. The ten's a little demanding, of course, but... What do you like on the five, just off that side rail? Um, like shoot the three, come two rails, uh, and come at the five, taking a little cut where you got to kill the cue ball there, Mark? Or, yeah, oh. you mean like towards the center of the table, two cushions from here, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that, because otherwise you got to jack up, and now you got to control that speed pretty nice. I'd love to add a hair more angle on this. Just a hair. It should be okay, though. Oh, he's coming for the other side. So, so speed, very crucial. No, but it's laid flat. That's why he yeah. chose that. You're, he would have liked to have a little more angle like what you're suggesting. Now, short side. And, again, it's not a short side. And, you know, there's a little more space on the 10-footer. Should be able to pinch this behind the 7, no problem. Just slowly move the cue ball with a little low and a hair left. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, he even slightly overcut it and held it nice. Well, now one rail out to the center. But he really is the professional. He almost knows when to take that extra time, like right here. You know, he got through the tough stuff. Now take a little extra time to make sure he didn't get ahead of himself or 
Overcut it? Yeah. Wow. Well, there's that jinx again. All right. Well, this is pretty deep in there. It's not that easy to play position from. Yeah, and he's probably, I think he can draw. Can he draw straight out of it? Looks Just like get, he can draw. Yeah. yeah. Hard to tell from our vantage point. It looks Pro like he can. Probably good that he's not tucked away somewhere. Oh, this is going to get awkward. It does go by the nine. Isn't that the darnest thing? Here it's deep in the pocket. You can't miss the ball, but it's hard to play position. Uh, yeah. Well, and again, like we talked about yesterday, so many things you cannot practice them all in our in our sport. And so you got to make your best judgment and then a little feel, a little gut instinct. Definitely wants to attack here. Doesn't want to duck. And what a huge game. Could have been 4-1. Can still be 4-1 maybe. Good shot. Looks like he can draw and get this to grab and not have any problem. I think he's pretty good on this 10. He did. I guess there's, okay, just toweling off a little bit. I didn't think he is a lefty. I didn't think there was really a stretch here, any, any kind of extension. Does play with the short extension on his cue. Good chat. Three two. Play in front. Conrad locks in once again, just right of the center. Seven and nine ball behind the one. Nine ball made it. Side pocket. The one mug is chipped down table, so he has a shot. Oh, and the two's right down there. A couple balls hanging. This is a great spread. Wow. This is as good as you could ever hope for here. from the 6 to the 8 to the 10. Everything else kind of grouped together. A little shocked he didn't follow that and get below mm -hmm. the four just for the stretching. Mm -hmm. You can you can still get above the five where you want to get with that nice getting the thin angle to come down for the six. Cheat the pocket a little bit here, just come one rail. Probably wants to get a little bit of an angle to come around the ten. You wouldn't want to come all the way down and try and get straight, really. Which is what yeah, he's going to yeah, yeah, but now he's going to draw. It's a little, yeah, that's what I say, a little more awkward than you, coming a little more centerish. You always want to use the angles rather than use your stroke because uh, now you're creating spin volume and speed and making the direction. The other thing, you have the direction is just speed, so you take a whole set of variables out. Now, this is a little bit funny, not because he can't get back, but because uh, if he hit the pocket thick or thin, it changes where the cue ball goes quite a little bit. Uh, smooth through it and just accept it a longer 10 ball. And if you just think about it, most everything's going to be a hair longer on this 10-footer. So don't worry about it. Don't, don't fret. Mm -hmm. 
Quality break and run out. 3 3 is our score. A nice break and run there from Conrad. Things are all tied up after six racks. Regains the piece. I want to thank a few of our sponsors. That includes Simona's Cloth, Airmen, the Belgian Billiard Balls, and Q Tech. Performance you can feel. Boy, we'll have the break in rack seven. Ball got away a little bit there. The four railer, like you said, they're starting to get closer and closer. Yeah. Yeah, a little miss on the one there. Got a little high on the cue ball. Mm hmm. Push. Anytime you hit a little higher on the cue ball, of course, not as much mass. So, not going to get quite the reaction on the rack. Push out coming. And even more, even more so on the ten footer. This is where the you know the clip and the ball from distance and running back behind the ten and seven and all that. You really, really have to have that in your arsenal. It comes up a lot on the push out because it's a tough shot. So you're going to push out to that quite often. Uh, you know, and a lot of times you'll get it back because it's not easy. Like here, for instance, the three has got a little of the pocket covered up. Mm -hmm. You want to hit the left side of the one and run the cue ball two rails behind the ten, hoping you have a little cover. The key to this is you got to smooth it back. If you get into it, it'll hydraulic a little bit. And you see how the one's going to probably not have a pocket now yeah. because the three's a little funny. Oh, so. Good decision. When you're playing that clip shot, what you want to think of is just the cue ball coasting up on the rail. That's that's the speed you always want to feel like you're playing it. Or usually, anyways. There are, all, there are exceptions. Well, it looks like he's going after the three. He might want to go rail first here, if that's the case. Or get it. Oh, he was playing the bank. Mm -hmm. oh. Beautifully. Oh, wow. What a Beautifully. Shot. What a shot. Now he's got a pretty big tester coming back. And this is where sometimes... You know, he's a little better on average than most opponents is really with that long ball. I mean, he can, when he's comfortable, he can knock these in at a high rate. Yeah. Very straight backswing, and he just gets through the ball so smooth. And really fearless. He's going to power up. He's hitting downward, so we know he's going to use a little power. Oh, perfect speed, too, for that to be accepted. It, he increased the margin of error there, so he didn't power up, like I said. But rather smooth through it. Well, that's where, that's where you know I talked about earlier. People get involved with straight. Well, that's where straight will help a ton. Is from distance and where you're not getting at it as much. The cue, you know, everything holds up real well. Don't miss it. The cue ball, you know, because mm -hmm. he hit it with like a light drawish drag kind of stroke. And oh yeah, you got to really depend on your me mechanics. It's a ton of spin, so we know he hit the bottom of the ball, and then to have that much movement with that little power which makes the pocket very forgiving all right making the out of the match here it seems like with the bank on the one the shot yeah. on the two and a little out of line here and it doesn't quite want to grab the inside as much as we'd like on this type of shot for some reason so easy to get a little over the eight maybe as you're queuing at the six Now, yet another little funny angle here. <laughs> yeah, he's looking to see what, how, how will I deal with that 10 ball if I get this angle over here where it wants wow. to go. Just remind yourself how good you are knocking the ball in. So just give it a little foot draw. And this 8's near the 7. I wouldn't try to go past the 8 here. I like that shot. Yeah, you're going to have to deal with the 10 ball now. Can you draw yeah. away from yeah, the 10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. got enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can. Yeah, like he's saying, he's not going to be able to get real close to the eight here, but he's going to accept that and use his, use his talent. 
right yeah. there, right? And ex no, some racks you're just not. That's how they are, and you know. Right. And this right. everything else makes it harder. So yeah. Pure. Yeah, and your confidence goes through the roof a little bit. Get to make some nice clean strokes. Nick Varner used to say, yeah, you're just going to play sometimes for a week straight where you're just two, three inches out of line on every shot, it seems like. And mm -hmm. That's just part of the game. Oh, he's smooth. Yeah. Phil Mickelson, smooth. Plays with a lot of confidence, I'll tell you. Fun to watch. And a really nice guy as well. Yeah, I don't know him at all. I've broadcast a number of his matches. He's always been smiling and pleasant to me, but we've never really spent any time. Well, nice out there from that little defensive exchange. 4-3 now. Yashish in front. His first lead, I believe. Cross corner on the one to get that rack started. Two ball was just as good. And then just kind of had to really grind through the rest of the rack. Good stuff. Two and the five around the corners. They're starting to track for that four railer. Let's see what happens here. Let's see. Got kissed. Long. Dry break. Leaves the shot. <laughs> yeah, that's not what the doctor ordered here. No. And the four doesn't pass the eight. The three's awfully tricky. The two's near, but he, can he get the angle? I guess he can get kind of straight on the three. To follow through to play the four in the opposite corner by the seven over there is what he's going to look at. Maybe he gets it in the four on the side. Doesn't pass the eight, the four. So he's got to fall really straight here. Can't get the, the positive kind of good angle. But if he comes back too far, he could have problems. And I think he's gotten pretty perfect. So again, just follow through this. Could come down for the side, but don't force it. The corner's okay. Looking good now. Ooh. That one caught a lot of rail. Stood up for a little <laughs> millisecond before it, it fell. Filters right in the position there, real nice. Mm. Draw back a little bit here. That would make things easy. Use about a foot out of the cue ball, maybe, maybe a hair more than that, be able to pull up the rail. Pretty perfect. Now just a little low right. Got one rail right at the nine. Don't back off here. No reason to be extra long away from this nine when you're in such a good spot here on the eight. And ten balls down. We're tied up four games apiece. Conrad Yashushin playing at a 944 clip. Boy, 
boy appears to be at 885, I believe. Well, less than an hour into the match, we've got eight games played here, Jeremy. That's a different pace than we're used to this afternoon. Oh, absolutely. All right, Oi, breaking. Five and the four right behind the one ball. Eight balls, or four balls tracking for the side. One ball got kissed around. Looks like he's left a shot. I don't know if it's a bank shot or he can cut it. Yeah. Don't think he'll cut it, but maybe. I think the two does squeeze by the 10. It's real real tight, but he can get underneath this, I think, as well with the bank shot. I don't know about the cut. Is he cutting it, Mark? It's hard to tell. I think he is. Nope. He's got to slow down a little bit. Just a little. Oh, he's going to get perfect where he can run the cue ball between the 9-10, I think. And I wouldn't say this is perfect, but not bad to have a natural route to try and get at the three. It kind of felt like he thought he'd make the bank at that pace rather than, and give up a little bit of anxiety about the position part of it. Well, and I'll tell you what, another thing that happens, you know, when you're not 100% about your route and you feel like you may bump a ball down table a little bit. It yeah. makes you want to put a little more into it for yeah. some reason. I've yeah. always felt that. Yep. Well, then he missed the two ball. Yeah, I didn't expect that miss, I'll tell you. So I'd say Conrad's a little more solid at the moment. I think always breaking the ball is better. Some dry break in the last from Conrad that got Oya an open shot and got back on the board to tie the match. But should have been a break and run here after that nice bank on the one. So quite the opposite for the two players. Maybe Conrad getting the break going a little more. Maybe Oya just shoring up a couple little things mm -hmm. after the break. One thing Axus had proved to me was uh, educational. Oh, my. Well, he missed that by a good bit. Is that uh, the value of each ball. And so the total performance average is predicated on the volume of balls that you make versus the volume of mistakes that you make. And sometimes you can't always run out, but you got to minimize those unforced errors where you're taking on a bank or an awkward cut or something that... That leads to a miss and then allows the other guy to get a bunch of balls on you. Look at this bank shot. Golly. That was, he just went all out for the bank. There was no safety to it. Well, we talked about this the last few years. I think the game changed a little bit. I mean, the great players have always been aggressive. But I think also, maybe not thinking about it here because, you know, Oi can get going, but. Now, he's used to playing tournaments with the jump cue, and these guys mm -hmm. kick so well, you know, and I, th yeah. I, th I think the players want to put it in their own hands a lot more often rather than play a safety that's pretty good, but, you know, these greats just return with, with a little bit better shot. All right, boy, regains the lead 5-4. Playing like he's got somewhere to be. <laughs> yes, dinner reservations at 5 o'clock. Dust this guy off and get to dinner. But nevertheless, for those of you that want to get, become better players, uh, really take a look at AccuSetting your matches. And uh, you can go accu-stats.com and just click on the library and it will tell you exactly how to calculate it. It was an invaluable resource for development. Okay, the two ball found the side pocket. These guys are ranging in, hit them pretty good. Well, what kind of a shots he got here? I don't know if he can thin cut that ball. Well, he can, I know that. 
He can oh, cut them. Yeah. He can cut them for sure. So, I mean, I don't know as far as what he feels about position or if it's going to get him in trouble, this cut shot, but I don't feel like he's going to play safe, whether it's a cut or some type of bank to hold position on the three. But I think he'll cut it and try and produce something. Three row out, banking instead. Made the bank. Well, I don't think it goes in the side. Now he's down looking at it to see if it goes in the side. Might be looking to see if he can get it past the five and let the cue ball go up and tickle the ten ball to use those blocker balls to pin him in. Well, nope. going to come back into the clutter. How'd he do? Oh, excellent. Excellent shot. This is a tough hit there, Double J. Yeah, I think if he can go two rails by the six, but he's got to hit it slowly to let the left spin open up a little bit. I think the nine's in the way maybe of that two railer. That two railer plays a little bit uh, more naturally, though. This one, you mean? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know if he has the whole ball with the nine. I think there. he does. I okay. Think still takes a great shot. Oh, oh. he's going. No way. Yeah, three behind it. And you had to really manufacture an angle that way. So you might have been right. Maybe maybe it didn't go by there. That was a tough route there. Hit that ball way up in the middle of the table. Pretty slender margin of error. So uh, your session going to be rewarded from that good safety play. Ball in hand. stretch for the lefty a little mm -hmm. bit and having to get into the cue ball I don't think going forward is an option here just kind of elevate take down on the ball doesn't have to get real close though as he can stun two rails off this ball getting by the eight got to make a nice shot though that's for sure takes a Good look at this line. Then he wants to five all the travel. Comes down, checks his position so he can be completely committed to his shot when he executes. Lends itself to an extra little bit of uh, consistency. And solid Pretty there. Shot. Yeah. Pretty shot. Good position. Two cushions, floats right in towards the seven here. Now just roll it ahead, I believe. Oh, stun it back. Must have had the angle that it was going to lightly graze the 10. Didn't want to fool with it. Now this is just straight top spin down the center of the table. Speed control looks pretty good. Needs to go another. Got it. Perfect. Yep. Oh, why'd he stun? I thought he could have rolled forward for the lefty and had no str I mean, I was right on the line here. I mean, uh, definitely would want to go forward right there mm -hmm. as a lefty. Uh, and, yeah. and and not only are you going to get straighter on the shot, you're going to reach everything that way. Yeah, you had to, you had to work to get out of line there where he got yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> had to put forth some effort to get out of line, yeah. That's a little awkward here. Absolutely missable. Okay, good rack there. Things continue to be tight. Five, five, good work. 
That was a break and run out. Second one of the match for your session. Break has not been the problem for Oi, that's for sure. Not saying he's always getting a shot, but he's making balls. Like you said, 10 games played pretty quickly between these two. Mm -hmm. about, an, about an hour total. Just under, yeah, yeah just, just under an hour. hour. And there's been a few games with some tactical battles, but when the shot gets open, they're getting it done. You can see all this ball, so real hard to pass and push out. Not trying to take something on. Well, he'll take that pretty all day. Pretty good, yeah, yeah, pretty good. Moving the both balls that far and then tuck it in behind the three with the cue ball. Great yeah. job. And that's definitely knowledge, but a lot of feel, a lot of trust. Two railer. Yeah, and this is medium. He's not going to crush it. He's going to try and hit it on the numbers where the one goes between the five and ten. And this often gets you separation here, which this did. Yeah, he's not unhappy either. The one railer, if you go off the side rail, rarely gets you separation. This one often gets you separation. So that's why you might choose two rails over one. I'm not sure what he's playing. Tremendous shot. Good speed control. Yeah, that, that angle fooled me. Because well, the cue ball like didn't move much, and the one came between the three five, and he hit the left side of the one. So maybe that was sitting a bit different than I, I gathered there. I mean, Well, I, I think he just took on a, a tough shot. Yeah. Because yeah, that was close to the double kiss. And yeah. if it clips either one of those balls, then there's no way of knowing you are or you aren't. Did he but, put a little right English on that to kill yeah. the cue ball? Okay, because that makes hand. sense of why the one held up a little bit more, too. So the table's definitely breaking in as well, Mark. This table here, by the time we get to the final day, it's going to be a little more playable with the cue ball for the guys, but I think the pocket's going to get quite a bit tougher as well. Okay, he left a, a cut shot, an open look, but it's certainly not an easy shot. No, it's not the comfortable speed. Mm-hmm. You know, if the three's down table and he gets to let the stroke out to get position and knock the ball in, that's different, but... May come, if he does go at it, he may go right at the three with the cue ball for one cushion. Just slightly overcut it, but uh, not a bad pass at it. Just a hard shot is all that was. Oftentimes we say, oh, he got quick, he jumped at it, he lunged. No, none no, of that existed. No. That was just a, it was just a hard shot is all that was. Absolutely. And you always want to guard against chunking it, right? So you're going to play probably to the top side of the mm -hmm. pocket a little bit with the one. Now, this match has been a really good contest because even the, the errant shots have been quality shots. The quality misses. We're not seeing uh, hideous misses or gruesome shots. Yeah, the Polish players will fool you how efficient they are with a lot of safety play. Just so good offensively as well. A little kick and stick here, medium speed. Nice. A little unfortunate, but nice effort. Yeah, tough part of the game. Another one of those dynamics. You got to, you know, play the safety, the kick, the little nick here, and then you got to come back and, and set, settle yourself for a long, long, tough shot to knock in. Really a brutal game. Well, the comrade smoothed one of these in just a little bit ago. <laughs> Center cut. Golly. <laughs> Pure as could be. Phil Mickelson. There it is. Cut. If 
Five has two pockets, so don't get anything extreme on the four. Don't make it a missable ball. You can play position on the five to get to the six from either pocket as well. And that fell a couple inches short, so he's going to have to take on a bit more on the six. Now here, make sure you don't come off that side rail too much. That way you don't have an odd stretch as a lefty. We are using a 30-second shot clock with one extension per rack. Neither of these guys have, I think, even gotten to that point where they needed an extension. Mm, a little cough there and holding his chest. Uh. Maybe a little concerned health-wise. Good chat. It looks like he's perfect, right? Stun draw? Uh, it looks or excellent. just draw? Well, I think, no, I think you're going to go the side rail here. It has that much angle, doesn't it? Yeah. Before the side? Or no, you gonna, no, no, gonna... after the side. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. He could stun two rails, but he likes that shot a lot as well. Like that. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Well, we got a pool match here. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, these two, you know, we just had the holidays, right? So people take a little time during the holidays. But these guys don't take much time off the pool. So you figure them to be yeah. in pretty good form. And, and they're two guys that hold up well under pressure. So alternate break figured to be a pretty good match. Yeah, very, very entertaining match here. Neither guy has backed off at all. It's shown no signs of getting weak. <laughs> Four and a quarter inch pockets. I measured them this morning just because I doubted it, but they are. put the new rubber on my table and the guy says you want four and a quarter I said hell no I want four and a half you start tearing up my table five by ten with four and a half you're you're playing pretty darn good these guys are playing pretty darn good yeah the first five by ten I really ever played on a lot of pool really well I, I take that back there was a couple in Houston that I spent a little time on um, not a lot but then at CJ's there in Dallas and it was tight for a long time, they changed it a few years later, but every time I go to Dallas, I just spend a ton of time practicing or maybe a little action. And so I kind of always felt like I played some of my best pool on the 10-footer just because you couldn't ever really put, play that sense stroke. You know, mm -hmm. you always had to commit to the stroke. And once you got by it mentally, you could really start to do some amazing things, really. I couldn't imagine straight pool now. I'm not a straight pool guy overall, but... Some of the break shots like we were talking about yesterday and stuff is quite, quite different. Now, would you move the seven here? I might move the seven to make this a little more difficult on the push out as far as what your opponent's going to think is easy. If you don't move the seven, he just clips it, maybe runs the ball and uses the seven mm -hmm. to get the snooker. Mm -hmm. Now, he's going to run it. He's going to play somewhat like... Alex did where the one falls to the end rail a little. Oh, never mind. A little Boy, creativity here from good Conrad. Good chat. Good chat. Well, that's another reason when you push out, if you give up the bottom of the ball, the cue ball, that is, that's why you see so many players push out on the rail just to limit those options. He's got the cut, though, right? Yeah, he has. Cue ball going at the Super ten. thin. Banged in the 10, and 
found its way down the table enough that he has a good shot on the two. Big stretch, though, and a ton of traffic. Boy, I hate to get snookered coming down here. But you gotta, you got to gamble. You just got to figure out the best route to gamble with. I think he can get by there. I don't think it's too bad. That, well, the 710 and all that, though. The four is covered up past, the three. I think he can get past the 10 over by us, yes. Oh, he hit it heavy. Yeah. Well, when you're stretched, you don't yeah. get as quite as much, you know, easy power, as you might say, or right. natural power. He needed the thin side of the pocket so the spin would take and the, maintain the speed in the keel, and he hit it in the center of the pocket. And so then that changed that direction just enough. I think he hook. can go for this. He's one of the best at the flat cut up and down the table. He really excels at this shot. <clears throat> I think he can go for this and go up and down. He's going to play a safety. I didn't expect to miss that mark. <clears throat> yeah, he's for sure disappointed, even though it's not a routine shot, but he gave up control of the table. You know, and I, I talk about that one all the time or the similar shot. When I see a pro or really just a solid player or even just, you know, mid-amateur, mid, mid -amateur, whatever you want to call it, when they go look where they want to get on that safety, they never miss their mark. Mm -hmm. But when they just look from where the cue ball's at, like, oh, I kind of, you know, I want to get yeah. behind the four, you know. Right. Conrad's for sure disappointed in his effort after that shot. Oh, nice shot there. Man. Didn't think he would gamble on the bank because there was no certainty you're getting position. Yeah, I read my mind there. Just like this one here, you really can't shoot at this, can you? Five doesn't go by the nine. You really have no path to get up and down the table. And he wasn't trying to make that. He just threatened the pocket a little more than, than he, he thought. Certainly was mm -hmm. trying to pocket the four. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell the speed that he played. This all of a sudden this is a, a daunting task here to get any kind of defense with this shot. You just gotta try to hit it, wasn't able. Not sure if the six ball cuts into the corner pocket from here. We'll be able to tell based on how he goes after the five. I think it does, Mark. You just got to play it, you know, close to the middle diamond, a little below it maybe. Definitely think it does cut. He hasn't looked at much on this end, so we'll see. <laughs> what a shot. What a shot. <laughs> The five ball kind of rattled around there. They're starting to want to hang up. Not quite yet, but won't be long. Oh uh, boy, he's gotten on the wrong what side. What happened here? That was a, a little D cell, Mark. You know, that's the problem when you have a quick tempo. It's one of the problems is the lighter shots, you sometimes don't accelerate the cue. You come back a little quick, and you kind of guide the cue stick a little more than just a little acceleration. I hint the wrong angle, froze to the rail. This could be brutal. Oh, a missable ball now. Look at how much power he got on that. Great shot. <laughs> Fantastic recovery shot. Now he's an awkward stretch. So but not out of the woods, but what a shot that was. <laughs> yeah, from where he was at. Whew, he made something happen there. Actually, he overhit it. He would have rather stopped a foot shorter than this. All right, the speed's a little in between. Tell a good shot light. Yeah, that's what I thought. And, and, and it's not the top, enough angle to hit it and go up and down, right? It wasn't enough angle to do yeah. that. It was just that little yeah. in between one. You know, he held the bridge in the air, and it almost seemed like he lunged a little bit with it. Like, he wasn't really even sure himself what he was doing there. He just kind of hoping and finding his way. He hit it well heavy. Well, one thing that has never really changed about Oi's game, and 
it's no knock. It's just a comment. Is his pace around the table as far as his body? You know, it's never really his entire career really settled down and slowed down much. Not saying it's ever going to slow down a lot, right? But mm-hmm. Conrad used to be much faster around the table too, and like most of us, really. And uh, he's he's gotten it to where he's a, he's a bit calmer with walking around. Now he's still not a slow player by any means, but he's not rushing to the next mm-hmm. shot, right? So. No, I could definitely see maturity in this game over the last five years oh, here. Yeah, you know, yeah. No question. 7-5 now our score. But I used to talk to Billy Thorpe a lot. And, you know, Billy, you know, most players, you know, you know what the error is. Most players, that you know, the progression is you get, you're a little quicker with the stroke and then you learn things and you settle it down a little bit. You're never slow, but just yeah. settled, you know. Yeah. And I used to tell Billy, I was like uh, – you racing around that table isn't helping that stroke get a little slower, you know what I mean? The, yeah. the, you're just thinking fast at all times. So, Six uh, ball fell short. The seven was tracking the first dry break for, for Oi, I believe, and it couldn't have come at a worse time. Is the 5-10 playable, Mark? The five's pretty messy otherwise. Yeah. I don't think he needs it this time, Ricky. I think the five's off the rack. You just move the rack and slide it between, but of course he wants to make sure there's no mistakes. That's probably the Especially best. Especially when it's a combination. Yeah. Just, yeah, you don't want to. Well, it's these guys' livelihood, right? These these players, so he wants to make sure everything's on point. Now, this, now, the, yes, the ten is playable, but not easy. Yeah. You're going to have to create an angle there on that combination. And then when the object ball is close together. Well, if he could get on the four right, the five does play on the side. Would offer to get on the six, yeah. you know, to the corner it yeah. does go to, right? So ooh, that's got to go just to make things easy and not run into the three. I'm surprised he didn't go long on that versus pulling it, you know, go long above the nine. But maybe that wasn't there. He wouldn't bank this, would he? Oh, yeah, that's what he's doing. He would bank it. Mm -hmm. And now he's in position to maybe get really tidy on the four to maybe have some options on the five. Yeah, I think the only way to get out there was to make the bank because if you go into that three, you're getting separation, and three goes on the end rail. There's no point to it. Yeah, he wants to draw the rail and back off. He needs to go a little bit. He's got that real good effortless draw, too. Yeah. You, like, when you hit it effectively, it just goes further than... Well, now he's perfect. He can Now he's going to size up the combo, but the he can play the five in the side here and get the perfect angle to just stun over for the six. So a real working man's out here. Yeah. We, we want to do the lazy way, the combination, and you can connect on that, but... Oh, how's his speed? Not good. Not good. Well, I'm uh, shocked he didn't play it with inside a little left English to make the cue ball bite because you wanted to get the angle going, you know, away from the ten. You didn't want to have to go into the ten. Yeah, that was surprising to me. Well, he's gonna have to kick off the end rail now. I don't think there's a better way to go. No, he's gonna. Oh, he's gonna kick to make possibly the ten. Oh. What a, what a hit. nice hit. Or the five. Or the five in the corner. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Snookered on the six. Well, you can't be mad about that. <laughs> no, I know, I know. At this point, he's just glad that five's not hanging down there. <laughs> Maybe he has a piece. Apparently he did. No. Uh-oh. Oh. And he's going to get a snooker in return or maybe no, no pocket. A combination. Off Awkward. angle. Yeah. Straightish. Flat a little bit. <laughs> All right, Oi. Feels like it was slipping away a little bit, but it's only 7 5. So, I'm going to regroup here. Beautiful shot. Oh, it just looked like it was natural, but it was not that easy. No, he hit it with that kind of floating, little bit of drag ish. Just an awkward stroke you don't use very often. Watch out, nine. Don't want to get over the nine. 
Okay, he'll most likely come back for the side now after gaining this much angle. Get a little straight there. Yeah, he hit that pocket just a hair heavier than he intended. High inside. I like him not putting a ton of right on that. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get real good with the right. Right. So why add it and, and yeah. not get all the way across? Just get over there and roll this in. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Everything else takes away some of the success rate. 7 6 is our score. Good out there, by the way. Interesting rack. I'm sure Conrad's lamenting the fact that he didn't get some type of a play at the five directly where he could have protected himself rather than just have to kick. Yeah, it's like a, I believe it was the last match towards the end, we talked about a situation to where when you're not moving the cue ball much, it's almost like the under hit happens way more than the over hit in my mind. It's almost like you're trying to, you know, make sure you don't over hit the ball mm -hmm. a little bit. And they're usually fuller shots like that four was. You're not much cut. And uh, you end up just backing off a little bit and, and not getting enough on the cue ball. Two in the eight. Looking to find the side pocket. Neither one does. Cue ball got a kiss. Four rollers not working. Dry break. He's left an edge, and the guy that likes an edge to take on <laughs> this cut. Whew, this would be ultra thin, though. Yeah, it's up, though. If you look at it, it's like a ball and a half, two balls away from the side rail. That usually kind of tells you it's very cuttable. Main thing here is just good stroke. That's all. All cuts easy. Oh, wow. He caught a lot of that ball. Look how high the cue ball came mm -hmm. up. So. Yeah. Okay, getting position, not easy. Very straight here with the cue ball and the one ball. You might have to pull it back and just take the cut on the two. No, he was able to create enough angle here. Okay, good job. Yeah, the further you come back, right, the more it comes out, usually. Checking to see if the three will go by the ten. That's where the cue ball wants to go is on that side. Otherwise, you got to do something to keep it on this side. Yeah, and the three-five is an awkward kind of combination, the way the five laid on top of the pocket a little bit. Uh -huh. The four past the eight definitely goes in the side. Conrad trying to keep a two-game lead. Boy, he does break in the next game, so crucial game here. So what he's saying is, I'm going away from this four a little bit and really can't get the cut in the side that I really like. Maybe the ten's a little hampering that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that the four does. I'm sorry, Mark. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, yeah, he's looked yeah. at that three a number of times. So we know the ten is an impediment of some kind. I think the four does squeeze by the eight in the side, but or in the corner rather, but it is tough. Okay, stun. Needs a rub. Got it. Now, still a lot of work. If this five's on the pocket in a little bit of an odd manner, getting back to the six correctly to hold for the seven is, might not be so easy. Don't want to end up super thin or past the six, right? Right, right. Nice shot. This ball must be off the rail a little bit. This is where you got to learn to slow mm. kind of draw it. You don't want it really getting to move too much. You could easily get past this six. Yeah, you see how it's kind of moving slowly right here, Mark? Right? Yeah. That's how you want to stroke the Gorgeous ball. Gorgeous shot. <laughs> to just get past the nine and get this angle so it's easy. You can just roll it in have it. Mm -hmm. That was a tremendous shot. 
Conrad's feeling good. And don't take this for granted. And you got nice movement there. And he can reach it pretty pretty easily, I think, the lefty. Points at the rail where he wants to keep ball to hit the second rail. He hit his mark, so his speed's going to be good. Cue ball trickles over, routine 10 ball. 8-7 is now on the score. 8-6. Eight, 8-6. Eight, 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 All right. Thank you. Are you able to see those TPAs? There it is. Yeah, 892. Okay, yeah. Conrad, you shush him back up. He was down a little bit, and Oy at 815. Both short. Here comes the three. No, the four rail are still not working. Three six. Uh, dry break. Yeah. And a shot. And he started off beautifully breaking the balls in this match. Uh, it's kind of gotten away from him a little bit. May have to take on the bank here. Can he navigate around all that traffic to get back for the two? Can he kill the ball cutting the one? Mm, I don't think he can kill it enough. It's pretty thin. Yeah, when you're close to it, a lot of times you can you know, kind of manipulate the ball a little bit, mm -hmm. but this one looks a little too thin maybe. Now he's looking at how far can I go because he really wants – this is so easy to cut in. You really don't want to have to bank this. So he's going to try and go three rails around. So side rail right before the side, middle of the end rail between the 410 off second rail to the third rail and back for the two. Now, can he go around the four? That's the angle I would look at. Just what he's looking at there, that looks more natural off the one to me than between the 410. If you get that angle, then you get positioned much, much easier on the two, where if you go the other side, the, then you got a narrow window to look out for. Tagged it square. Yeah. He kind of stunned off the ball, though. I thought he was just, again, just that rolling English. Not a hard kick for these guys, though. They really work on this quite often. So kick, it get pretty meaty on the two where it kind of skew ball slowly goes over behind the five and six. You can also trickle goes. up on the, oh, he stuck it good. Yeah. As I say, you can trickle the cue ball if you go a little thinner up on the six. Yeah. That, that's effective, too. Left a gap. Well, maybe not. I, I thought he definitely could get at the two. I get so fooled, so he's got to go two rails at this. Maybe one rail. All right, he wants some ten ball action. Did you an high ball? A little harder, he had it. Yeah, he'll take it, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good solid impact. Key ball comes in. Hits the two ball, hits the cue ball a second time, leaves it. Great. <laughs> nice opening shot there. Yeah, you got it on the right angle here to easily transfer to the four, which make make the position on the five play much easier. Could just draw it over there a foot and a half. And good. I don't know. Do you spin this with the hair he can, left? He can even play it back in the side if he needs to. He's he's got a good zone here. 
Now he got a little funny here from his rub on the six. Now he's got to hit the wrong angle. You're going to have to thump this one. Low. Okay, quality shot there. Now it's an easy two cushion transfer to the seven. Relatively easy, I should say. Yeah, you can handle quite a bit. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Shoo. So you can't handle that, but did get away from it a little quick with the transition. The English did not. And that had to come up on yeah. the delivery, too, which brought the tip up with it. That's why he didn't get it back behind the side pocket as much. That keep the hitting out there. His head stayed completely still. Great recovery. After a bit of a sweater there on the, yeah. on the six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're seeing some really clean pool here. Now it's 8-7. I knew that was going to be the case. 8-7 it is. Yashashin in front. Conrad looking to maybe take a timeout. I don't know. Should be Conrad's break. Is that Brandon Schuff I see? It well, is. he's here. I know okay, that. Okay, I've I seen him all week, and I just can't, I can't see the face, but just kind of like he's got certain mannerisms, like walking and cueing and stuff, and I kind of feel like it's Brandon Schuff. Good to see him here. Very dangerous player, I'll tell you that. Great player. Four and six ball right behind the one. Well, looks like the four ball's tracking. Got it. One ball was coming down for the cue ball, but it got kissed upward. Yeah. He's got a shot on the one, but not only is it tough, good luck getting shape on the two. Mm -hmm. All that traffic. I just don't see a route, really. Not that it isn't kind of ridiculous, really, you know. Yeah, you think you can get to the end rail by the nine? You got to be kidding. Who risks that one? He's winding up like that's what he's doing. Yeah, that's just that's too why. much of a gamble. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. The difference of hitting that uh, point right next to it, you can't tell. It depends on how that ball enters the side pocket. Too many factors that uh, you could be happy with and still scratch, right? You could be happy the way you hit it. I don't think he was totally unhappy at all. Um, and really, it was just the shot itself. Now, why wouldn't you follow into this position, Mark? Why wouldn't you shoot the two in the other corner and follow into that position? I've always done that versus drawing mm -hmm. back behind me. But Well, we use draw more often, so some guys default towards that. But I agree with what you're saying. It's simpler. But yeah. They're confident. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's just, uh, you know, if you're a faster player, it's what's right in front of you at the moment. You know, if we sat him, I handed him the cue ball on the other side, he may have just followed in that position. Yeah, so. yeah. For those of us that are lazy, we just just play it. Which <laughs> don't want to walk around the table. Well, you know. No, I know it's right. You know, these guys are in the heat of their career, right? So I mean, you know, they're the best players in the world. They're not thinking making a mistake, no matter which way they shoot it. So, which is uh, which is a great mindset. You know, just you and I are here to talk about percentages. Well, a real mental error here by Conrad Yashushin taking that shot on. Yeah. scratching on that he because he couldn't hit the side pocket any purer with the object ball so it or wasn't could, anything problem with that it was just too dangerous of a shot was the issue yeah he couldn't hit the corner any more pure with the cue ball as well <laughs> no right, <laughs> uh, right. Made the one, but i even so. said it beforehand that, yeah, uh, yeah you did too you, you said yeah. this is going to be too tight isn't it 
That was sure the case. I would have rather seen him jack up and draw with inside and try and wrap three rails around. Or just is, duck. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Just don't course, lose doesn't. like this. Yeah. I mean, you gave it away, a shot that's so low percentage. It looks beautiful. If you get out from there, boy, it is stunning. But now you're 8-8 eight, eight, instead of possibly battling to be 9-7 in front. Huge difference. And kind of from nowhere, we got this match tied up. Okay, it looks like... Uh, what's going on here? No, it's Conrad's asking for a break, or maybe it's uh, Oi that asked for Let's see, it's tied, so it would be Oi's break. That's right, in this so, race to Okay, two. and Conrad asked if he can leave on Oi's break. Right. Okay. That's what happened. All right, short player timeout. This has been an up-tempo match. I've enjoyed it. Very entertaining. Well, it's just like the people that devise these great games we play, um, it's amazing how incredibly smart they were and how how everything really does apply, you know. Yeah. Like everything makes sense, you know. It's just like if you ever go around pool rooms and you know they play golf on the snooker table, right? Well, some of them they play with that eight that ball in the middle, the hickey ball. Yeah. Well, it makes perfect sense because that ball in the middle is so obstructing. Yeah. You know, and it's also carries for many snookers and you know, there's just everything that makes sense about the game and another reason why I question some of us that try to change rules uh, and drastically, like call shot, for instance, in 10 ball, I think, you know, you're just not thinking the game through like the people that, that, that devised it and made it. All right, the break has definitely gone away for Nayuki Oi here in the second half of the match, and ironically, he's made a comeback while struggling with the break. Mm-hmm. So he's just going to try to chip the one ball underneath the three and run the yeah. cue ball? Yeah, but nope. this is... No, he I'm might sorry. be going under the... Yeah, he's going this way. Okay. Yeah, which is good. You know, there's a lot more easy mm -hmm. decisions with safeties with no jump cue. But the one thing is whenever I'm right there in front of it, I want to look a little more and say, hey, is there really a, a better one, you know, that's going to get me Yeah. maybe even ball in hand? Because you do get 60 seconds after the break, I believe, correct? Yes. Ooh, top English, harder to judge here. Hit it beautifully. Watch out, cue ball. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you can roll with this pretty freely if you don't, if the scratch isn't on, because you can just ease it on down there, and you're going to get the worst of the defensive exchange probably, but... You don't have to just absolutely sell out if you miss, is my point. And you can win with this shot. Nope. No, he scratched. Oh, doom. Okay. Yeah. That's the one thing you can't do is unforced air on a defensive shot that you can't win with. Well, with the 2 3 being there, he was being aggressive. And if you look at it, he missed his mark by like a diamond and a half. He's trying to hit the side rail and go back under. The 2 3 with the cue ball, correct? Yeah. I mean, that's what I assume, anyways. Yeah. That's the most natural shot from there. So maybe a little frustration setting in for, for Conrad. Uh, well, supported by a little impatience, too. I think yeah. he could have taken a little bit more <laughs> more time. Right? Yeah. It's kind of like he shocked himself with that scratch in the previous rack. So now he's going to follow it up with another bad shot or bad decision, anyway. And it got a little funny where it's not so easy to get above this three, which is really where he'd like to play from. So he's trying to figure out what ha what's the good place from behind. This is all right. Carry a bunch of angle and just draw straight down the table. You don't have to use a rail here. If you got a little more angle, you could just pinch draw it you know, mm -hmm. right down the table. So I think he can do that anyways, really. Looks like he's hitting a higher ball. Might be going between the eight and the side pocket here. Yep. Yeah, nice and shot. And once it releases, as long as you get to that mark, you're fine. I know. It's starting to kind of shape up like a rounder's hanging around, yeah. hanging around. <laughs> <You're> right? <laughs> Ouch. Well, we got a hill, hill thriller in the last. And we're setting up for a possibility of another here. I 
Okay, now he's going to have to back cut this five, which is going to lend the cue ball into the six. He's trying to gauge. Can't go forward, can he? He's got to come back a little bit here. At least that's what it looks like. Just push the five a little. I mean, push the six a little bit. Oh, wow. Nice shot. He hit the five well, but he's still got to come with another. Not the type of shot you want to check with inside. So he may go past the side, taking something longer on the seven. Oh, he checked it beautifully. Yeah, another good shot. Well, the tempo on that stroke was like really good. It's kind of like what you said. Sometimes you have to work harder. You can't get it all back in one shot. So you got to settle for that. You have to make a secondary hard shot. So. Absolutely. He let up a little bit, Jeremy, and now he's falling well short of where he could have been. And I wonder if that shot he almost scratched on, it was very similar to that one. I don't know if you remember, he kind of got quick on it, caught yeah. the point coming across on a very similar shot a few racks ago. Made a great recovery, but I wonder if that was playing on his mind a little bit. Now that was a nice shot. Speed. Good speed. Yeah, really, really good. good. Really good. He'll be the first one to the hill now if he can capture these last two balls. Yeah, and I think that'll be f four or five in a row. Not sure if we'll get our National Beard Rack Track or not, but to get a look at that. But it's been, oh, my. Never settled the tip, which he's not a big pauser at the cue ball either. Wow. Wow, he finally got to the place where he could win. Uh, it, couldn't he just roll that? He didn't have to do all that. Yeah, he? most of the guys like to draw that, though, and I agree with that. They're just a little more, uh, I don't know how, how to explain why they hit more draw. I do the same. But to me, again, the, the stroke really yeah. never settled. At yeah, all, the you know, stroke just, came yeah, apart. He yeah, exactly. fell in the pieces there. Beauty. Look at that smooth. Oh, that's a big-time shot. Similar to that long two-ball he made off the end rail early. Real pretty. Boy, he's got some tools. Dead aim. Well, he stole a game there. 9-8. Now your session in front. Kind of got one back after <laughs> after that bad shot, and then the oh, previous yeah, yeah, game, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he kind of got gifted one back. Talking about there. Conrad, yeah. After There's that, our rack that track right there. Okay, so it was only going to be three in a row from eight five down or eight six down, I guess it would have been to get up a nine to eight. Well, he just needs to think, I got to win one. You can't be thinking, I need to win two in a row. First, you got to win one. So just make it this, this is like Hill Hill right here for him. No, I like the speed. I like the speed. The one's coming with the cue ball. So looking for a oh, pocket on the one. But yeah. Can't tell that he, if he has much or. Hard to see. He's got. If he has to cut the ball, that's awkward. If he has to play a combination, that's not easy. And the, none of it may be on. I think he would shoot the combo if he wasn't that much cut on it. I really do, just knowing Conrad. Now, can he go through the one getting up behind the seven? Yeah, you're saying safety. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what he's going to have to do. He may back cut this. Yeah, thin it. Yeah, and run. Yeah. All right, there's a big pocket here. I mean, this going into the rail, chipping off the three about 25 different ways. You can hit the three and make the one. You get thick, little thick, mm -hmm. half the ball, a little bit of the ball. This is not the worst ball to go at if you feel decent about it. Well, you can go bank, too. You can... Yeah, that's for sure. He's banking straight down the table, it looks like. Yep. Going snooker safety. Rather than that chip the nine. No, I got the eight ball in there. Good. Treacherous, not treacherous, but tough little combo with ball in hand. I don't think he would shoot it, but you never know. On table 29, we need a cool hand, cool hand. Table 29. He's going to try to curve into the rail. 
Yeah, this has got to go too long, right? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, was yeah that was never on. No, because once you start <laughs> He hit curving. it right where he ended. <laughs> yeah. it was, didn't even threaten, though. Okay. Well, you're curving it now, not just to get to your point, but you're rerouting the original path of the cue ball. So not only with the English, it's definitely going to go long. Yeah, he kind of shot a blank there. There was no hope. Was hit it good or hit it bad. Either way, you were not hitting that one ball that way. Here. All right. He can just hold right there. Doesn't need to come back with the <laughs> cue ball at all. Just stay right there. The three naturally gets you to the seven. I get a kick out of the way his eyebrows and stuff. So oh, expressive yeah. and everything. His face looks better. He is a character. Love having him on the tour. He's a total credit to the sport. All right, little straightish. So, and maybe falling a little to the right a little bit off the six, it looks like. So I'd love to get above it, kind of where he's at now with the cue ball would be on that line would be kind of ideal. Might not have it, but as long as you get the cue ball back to the side pocket, you can deal with anything because the seven's off the rail, so you got some leeway. Yeah, but if you, you get straight, get there, though, didn't. I mean, you got to get back on the nine. You no, but I'm I mean, saying yeah. if he's another foot or so towards it now, you can manipulate the pocket a little bit. Here, yeah. you don't have that luxury and this is that angle where you can end up hitting it good, but yet settling on the side cushion. And anything straight, I'm going to draw the ball. Hard to cheat it too much. Yep. He did beautifully there. He actually, got the most of what he had. Yeah, when he's needed it really here at the end, uh, the stroke is kind of settled for the most part. <laughs> He <laughs> squints his eyes a couple times. Now, this is where you got to keep that head still. You're jacked up. That adds a little difficulty. You can't lunge at it. You're just going to have to let the, the stroke power do the work. Well, he jumped up anyway. He's going to fall straight. <laughs> this is gonna, he's going to have to make a test around the 10. Yes, indeed, unless he wants to get a little, you know, mm. froggy, let's say. I don't think this is the time to get froggy. I yeah. think you got to roll. Yeah. Or maybe just draw back a little bit. You can't try to get this away from the rail. No, oh, you got to go forward, to make a nice little shot in the side. He cheated it off a little bit. He wanted to get it just another inch. That was the speed you could get away with a little something. You couldn't try to power up out of there, though. All right, well, shooting this, you'll know you're alive when you shoot it. You will feel the tingle. Oh, beautiful. 8-8 eight, eight, or 9-9. Nine, nine. Beautiful. All right, we're getting our money's worth today. Yeah, that's right. Or oh, won the lag. <laughs> we'll break off. And All right. Our case game, 19. 19? Nine, nine. Yeah, 19. I'll tell you what, this is completely fair, too. Both guys have played great. Yeah, they brought those TPAs up for the most part. Conrad was a little higher earlier, but. Still pretty solid pool. Oh, it's hard as could be to stay on that 5x10 with a good player shooting back at you and mm -hmm. get over 900. Uh, this is tremendous. The winner of this match will move on and face the winner of the next match, which will be Shane Van Bowen and Lee Van Corteza. Boy, we'll have the break for the match. There's Shane Van Bowen entering the arena. He says, get this game over with. I want to warm up. <laughs> He's ready to get after it. I love his attitude. That's the guy that tipped the security guard to let him in here four hours early before everybody so he could get some time on the table and give the security guard a hundred bucks. That's somebody who wants to win. Go oh, backing off. Ooh, the cue ball. I know I'm pretty sure it was gone before the first kiss. I think it was gone after the second kiss. And then the third kiss kind of saved it, I believe. <laughs> Look at where the one went. I thought it was going to end up in front of the side pocket, but it dripped just past it. Watch this. Cue <laughs> ball. Yeah, it was arcing. It was kissing again. And then... It, yeah. I, th I think uh, it was originally going towards the corner. The first kiss cut it even more towards the corner, and the second kiss kind of saved it. A very peculiar arrangement of the balls there in the corner. Yeah. 
the most peculiar we've seen all week, really. What's he, he doing, doing here? here? Is he bringing the cue ball near the nine here off two cushions? Oh, he's playing it simple, just trying to get that behind and get some kind well, of cover. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Smart shot, considering everything. Yeah. Is there really a gap? You can be fooled thinking you can get through somewhere like this, and you really can't. But he could. And control, too. What a shot. <laughs> Boy, oh, he has to feel terrible about that outcome. It could have turned out so many different kind of ways that uh, he couldn't hold the cue ball. He had to be able to hit straight on it there to get that. Oh, I like the other kick. I like the kick uh, to the other two rails. That gives you separation. You're facing it. it yeah. can usually be really accurate. This one here is more about the make, I guess. Just roll forward, plan them, try and plan them. Yeah, I don't think you want to gamble and go all out here. Yeah. No, he didn't get in the gap. No, he got it wedged under the three. This is now we're looking at a oh, three rail wedged. kick. He's yeah. wedged for sure. So now we got a three rail kick. And you got to get enough speed to get a rail after Two contact. That's this right. Is, this is an odd one. This is if one. He, if he can three rail, now that's a lot, but if you can hit the bottom half of the one, then you can get the separation. And maybe or maybe even, go into the five. Right, you even get a dead clutter. He did it. Yeah. He did it. What a shot that was. Yeah, tremendous. <laughs> Good exchange here. Yeah. Conrad <laughs> ducks his head down like, oh, come on. I got him pretty good. Look what he did. <laughs> He's shaking his fist at him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The five got right in the way of the 310 combo, which is what Conrad is looking at right now, which is sitting pretty nice considering the rack itself. Yeah, that looks long. Oh, no. He hit it right in the face. These guys giving us all they got right now yeah. on this hill hill battle. <laughs> Good exchange going on here now. Huh. Boy. Keep it simple. Just cut the two underneath the one underneath the two, come two rails behind the 310. Just Boy, you leave that eight ball a lot of times doing that, but yeah. yeah. Just, uh, if you can get the, yeah, the cue ball mainly. I mean, that's all you yeah, can good, do, good, right? Good, good, he hit yeah. it too thin, though. But he was trying to make sure he got that cue ball down there, and that's why yeah. he probably overcut it because he wanted to get the pace on there. He didn't want to sell out the eight. Man, he's got to go into the two, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Maybe adds a hair side, but then he threads with the side pocket. So I think I go into the two just right. nice, you know, a little less than medium. Well, there's definitely some gamble in this one. How you hit the pocket dictates how good you hit the two. Or how, oh, oh, he, he got, he right got around it. Nice. <laughs> I didn't think the ten went by the by the five myself. He keeps looking at it, so it must be closer to the, the scoreable than we're thinking it is. He's looking at it both ways. So It maybe. never helped me to look from the pocket. I never improved my look of the ball. For me, look now yeah. if I look behind the three, of course, that's the best I can ever see it. I never understood going and looking from behind the this pocket. This goes. It, yeah, it, go. it just never improved me. No, no, me. no. I'm yeah. saying that now he's looked at it six times yeah. and he played for it, so... And he's he going knows up, it goes. He's going upstairs with the cue ball near the, all that congestion. <laughs> From my stand, vantage point, it just looks like the five is for sure in the way. <laughs> oh, hey, what the a far shot. side of the yeah. pocket. What a match. Wow. <laughs> the session moves on here. Oi he gave us all he has. Yes, yeah, so our runner-up from last year still in it, and our champion up next. Great match. Great match all the way through. Both players played great. We want to thank everyone for joining us. Please come back soon for Jeremy Jones and all of us at AccuStats. So long for just a while.